Prepare for launching. This is Drive Time Live with Mark Hahn on AM 1360 FM 94.9 KSEJ. For a recap of today's biggest news stories, stocks, sports, weather, and more, here's Mark Hahn. All right, we are back, and I am joined by Dr. Stephen Soloway. Uh, Dr. Soloway has a, a book out, and this is some of the things that some people were wondering, and you can count on Dr. Soloway to uh, talk about medical politics. Why should the politics ever mix in with medicine? By the way, the uh, website, badmedicinebook.com. Is that correct, Dr. Soloway? No, no, uh badmedicinebook.net and if net. you order from that address I send you a I'll, I'll sign them anyone who orders it from badmedicinebook.net I will sign the book and mail them to you alright the book is uh, called Medical Politics How to Protect Yourself from Bad Doctors Insurance Companies and Big Government the way you have it laid out here it seems like this is an ongoing conspiracy against the patients it is it is in fact um federal government, they haven't told you this yet, but we have socialized health care, and uh, uh, if you don't believe me, you just have to become a patient. The health care system currently works great if you have nothing wrong with you. The problem is that if you ever need a doctor or a hospital or help, you're not going to get the help you need. It's no longer available. Is that, um, is that just start... with government, like with through Medicare, or is it the people who you know, work uh, for a company who have their own insurance through the company, whether it's Aetna or whoever, or United Healthcare? Are they, is that, does that include them? Everyone's involved, and everyone's paid off by the government. Wow. And uh, the, the, the reason that uh, you don't have the government breaking up uh, large insurance companies like United Healthcare, which is the largest in the country, you don't have them breaking them up like they broke up um, AT and T, uh, the Bells. Uh, you don't have them breaking, you know, they broke up the uh, tobacco company Philip Morris. Mm -hmm. But you don't see them interfering with uh, freedom of speech with Google. You don't see them interfering with uh, freedom of your healthcare because uh, they got their hand in the in the cookie jar. And there's cons there are conspiracies. Uh, it's been proven with uh, Twitter. Uh, with the takeover from Elon Musk, that the uh, FBI had uh, moles in there, and, and there's a lot of nefarious activity. So, but but here's a practical thing for the patients. A anybody who's listening, when you turn 50, your engine light's going to come on. You're going to need the help of a doctor. You may have private health insurance through your job. You may have Medicare, Medicaid for whatever reason. There's 200 million people that have private insurance. There's 100 million people that have uh, Medicare, Medicaid. Medicare is for the elder for the elderly and Medicaid is for the disabled or the poor. Now, that being said, you go to your doctor today and you go in and you say, Doc, I have a fever, sweats, night, night sweats, uh, joint pain, I'm vomiting, I have this, I have that. The guy says, gee, you know, it sounds like you might be having an appendix attack or cancer or something. I need to order an x-ray. Oh, hold on a second. We have to get that pre-authorized. Well, why do you have to get it pre-authorized? I didn't have that five years ago. Well, these are the new rules. What new rules? I don't really know. The the, uh, the government has paid the insurance companies and the hospitals to make things easier for them. So what are they doing? They're auditing a thousand hospitals and not a million doctors. The hospitals are buying up all the practices. They are the, the new trainees are being told do not go into subspecialties. Stay in hospital hospital medicine. And the doctors are now shift workers, speaking broken English, running running in and out of the rooms. The patient needs their own advocate. The patient needs to be defended. And somebody, a doctor in private practice, will have the time to spend with them, but this is a dying breed, the time to argue on their behalf why they need that x-ray, why they need that medicine, why we're not accepting the generic, why we're not downsizing to to appease the payer, we don't care that United Healthcare or Cigna or whoever is shelling out whatever money they're shelling out because those are contracts that they made. This is not the problem of uh, the patient. The patient simply needs to know, I paid, I paid my premium and now I want my coverage. I was told, um, you know, you can't get your PET scan at that hospital because it's $10,000 there. Well, I'm sorry, I don't care. You negotiated that price. 
you should renegotiate it for 5000 the next time, but I'm going there. Um, you see, now I can say that because I'm an insider in this system, and this is a club. And as George Carlin would say, you're not in the club. Not too many people are in this club. You're just not in it. And you're getting screwed left and right. Your benefits are being cut. Your premiums go up every year. The doctor's reimbursement goes down every year. And they wonder why this system doesn't work. You know, somebody or a group called Government Overreach decided that it was easier, and it was Obama. This idiot decided that if a system works for 95% of the population, the fact that there were 15 million uninsured people, that that was a reason to completely destroy the existing system and have everything taken over by the government. And over the last 15 years, that's what we've seen. We've watched medicine become socialized. We've watched people die unnecessarily. There is very little good access to care. You know, access to care and access to good care are, are completely different. And even at the highest levels, with the lack of good training that's been uncovered in the last five to ten years, even the high rollers, unless they have friends and family who can identify who are the good doctors, nobody's getting good care. That goes straight to the White House, the Congress, the whole bit. I have some of those people that see me because they know this is a place you get good care. And you'll never find a plastic surgeon out of business because it's all word of mouth. So you need to ask your friends, your family, where do you go? Where did you get all that good treatment? You can't go to a system, get their family doctor, because you're only going to get referred within their system because it's all about keeping money in the system. And it's about the hospital keeping things in the system so that they could use more of the product of the day so they can get a larger rebate. And that's where the, the payer comes into the mix. And that's where the pharmaceutical company gets into the mix. And that's where the government is seeing all this and they're allowing it by telling the person, the individual, you and me, telling us, you have the access to your doctor. Well, you know, that's true on paper, but it's not reality because now that um, health system ABC has seven offices in seven counties, the doctors are shifting around. So if you want to see me, you'll only see me at that clinic every seven months instead of every day. So how is the average person going to keep up with this and get along with this? They're not, and they're fed up. And you know what? I really am starting to believe that the government wants you to stay home and die rather than waste precious resources, yet the company you work for will, will pay the premium, and the guy who is uh, the CEO who's got the lobbyist, who's in bed with the, the Senate, the Congress, and everyone else, that guy's going to take home a nine-figure check when he retires, and he'll work at least seven months to get that nine-figure check. Dr. Stephen Soloway is my guest. Again, you can find the book, Medical Politics, How to Protect Yourself from Bad Doctors, Insurance Companies, and Big Government. You can find it at badmedicinebook.net. Find out more. He'll uh, personally sign the copy for you, too. Are, are we already, then, in socialized medicine? Are we at the single-payer system that, that Hillary Clinton tried so hard to get a long time ago, but yet, and then here comes President Obama, he tried to take the next phase. Are we there already without everybody really officially recognizing that we got there? Uh, in in large part, we, uh, we do have not yet a complete single-payer system, but we're probably 75% of the way there. And the reason that we're never going to see it coming is because they cannot give care to all without raising taxes. And raising taxes is one thing, but it's when the omnibus bill comes along and it's a trillion dollars and health care made up, you know, $57 of it. And then there's, you know, I don't know, something for some native Indians and a new bridge or something. I saw that. So, yes, we are there. We are in socialized medicine. Absolutely, it is here. Um, hopefully, the pendulum swings back. 
Um, but the, the, the smart people are not going into medicine. The smart people in medicine are no longer teaching the other people. Anybody I know over 55 that saved enough money has left or retired. Um, there are more frustration. There's more regulations. There's regulations coming out faster than a printer can print them. Whether uh, and, and it did start, um, well, it started back with the Great New Deal in the 1930s, and uh, or the Big New Deal, whatever the hell the deal was. It's a bad New Deal. Yeah, it was just and, the and New that, Deal, yeah. Yeah, the New Deal was a crappy deal, and um, I believe in the late 60s you got LBJ who... Um, uh, put a couple of nails in this coffin, and then you got Obama come along, you got Hillary Clinton. But no, we have socialized medicine. We don't have a single-payer system quite yet, but I will say this. Medicare Advantage plans, which, you know, really, this covers millions and millions of people. You're 65 years old, you report now you're 65, you're on Medicare. Well, 10 years ago, you'd have Medicare and you'd have a second uh, supplemental insurance. And uh, you'd go to the doctor. The doctor would say, okay, um, you need this, that, and the other thing, and it would all be covered and whatnot. And the doctor would get paid. Now, the doctor would agree to accept the Medicare assignment, which was, we'll just pretend, $100. Medicare would pay 80 and the secondary insurance would pay 20 The problem is, is that used to be private. Now, Medicare Advantage, the secondary insurance, is an HMO. So... Everyone on Medicare is now on an HMO. You don't just have Medicare and come and go as you please. You have Medicare, but your secondary insurance is an HMO 90% of the time, and those people cannot get the testing or the drug that they need unless the doctor is willing to put on his boxing gloves and punch the payer in the face. And in my book, I've written many letters punching people in the face. Well, you need to. I, I, I remember fighting with insurance companies over something that I thought was wrong and, and it should have been covered. And especially when you're talking about in-network, out-of-network things, uh, you know, everybody has had a fight with the insurance companies one way or another. Either you walk away frustrated or you walk away like, hey, did something I accomplished because they said, okay, fine. Uh, so here we are. Do we have death panels now? Um, we were supposed to. Obama um, tried that. He wanted to kill off anybody over 75 on dialysis. But luckily, uh, you know, he didn't last long enough, and his policies didn't get through. Not every one of them. Well, it's, it's amazing because they keep pushing real hard, and they, there still is another uh, push at that, too. And we talk about uh, PBMs, these uh, f- pharmacy... Uh, pharmacy benefit, benefit ma- managers. Uh, pharmacy bullshit managers. Yeah, basically, because they're just playing right in the middle, because where, where's the cash go from one person to another? It's through the middle, and they're going to take their big cut out of that, too. There's a lot of things we could point at on this. Uh, Dr. Stephen Soloway, my guest, we're out of time. I'm here real quick. Uh, Dr. Stephen Soloway, by the way, is one of America's top rheumatologists, a former appointee uh, to Donald Trump President Council on Sports, Fitness, and Nutrition. And the book, again, is called Medical Politics, which you shouldn't use the two terms together. How to Protect Yourself from Bad Doctors, Insurance Companies, and Big Government. This is the battle that we all need to face. Go to badmedicinebook.net, and you can find out more about that. Dr. Soloway, uh, how long has it taken you to, to write this? Has this been a, a, a cumulative effort over years, or you just decided enough's enough, I'm writing a book? Two years ago, I wrote a book called Bad Medicine, and that was a compilation of everything I've seen uh, throughout medical school and residency and training and practice and all these horrible, horrible stories. And that book was more popular than I would have thought. Uh, I mean, we're not talking a million copy New York best, New York Times bestseller. We're talking 5,000 books, of which 2,500 was sold right here in my office. Mm-hmm. So I said, gee, you know, the next logical step would be to make the book a little bit more fundamentally sound in terms of, you know, actual problems as opposed to, you know, what did I see? So this is like, what you need to know, and the other one is like, let's talk about what Doc Soloway saw 
throughout, you know, let's say the first 25 years of a 35 year career. Let's put it that way. You know, let's look at it like that. Enough to so, I don't know. Each book took six months to write or something. That's enough to make a, to lose a lot of confidence. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you ever see it getting better? I like to be an optimist. Um, you know, I do like to believe that the pendulum swings back and forth. I do like the fact that generally no party holds the White House for more than three terms ever. Um, so being optimistic, I would say that if all doctors one day decided to stop taking insurance, that um, people would have to come to the table and things would have to be worked out. And we need uh, we need to go back to... All, all private and not all government, because the government can't do anything correct, and we all know that. That's it's a cliche, but it's true. Indeed. Um, well, that's the the book again is called Medical Politics: How to Protect Yourself from Bad Doctors, Insurance Companies, and Big Government. Go to badmedicinebook.net and find out more and order yourself a copy of that. Doctor Soloway, thank you again for being my guest here on Drive Time Live. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.